But that morning, I went to pick up me and my buddy Mike Ronnie. We went to pick up. We used to deliver appliances. What kind of, like fridges and shit? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Did someone buy them, or you just found? Them? <laughs> no, we would get subcontracted. Oh, okay. And you would deliver so, like, the water Sears dryer. And shit. And yeah. We'd have to go to this place. We pull up at the point, and just you know, thirty air conditioners on the loading dock. I go in. I give the guy the bill. No cameras in those days either. I give the guy the bill of lading. He gives me the paperwork. The retard kid comes over. I'll help you with the refrigerator. He carries it in. Then the guy gets in his car. One of his buddies. I'm going to get high. Fifty fucking air conditioners in the thing. I go, Mike, open up the back of that thing. What are you gonna do? You shut your mouth. We started putting fucking air conditioners in that thing. Ten, twenty. I was with the UPS man. I took every last air conditioner. We All of Brooklyn had everything. air conditioning on no, that block. No, Jersey. We oh, dropped Jer off the refrigerator, and we turned that motherfucker around, and we just drove down the boulevard, $100 a piece on air conditioning. It's July. It was June. It was like stealing. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. We sold them with them one I'll hour. bet. We split the fucking money. I went over to McGrath's house, my eighth grade teacher, my uh, football coach, the running back coach. Slash and, bookie. And I bought a 1,000 of those little gram bottles of Coke from him. Oh, my God. And I went out with my friends. I told I was in the meter at Joe and Mary's, but I took, like, a fucking Quaalude. And me and my buddies got fucked up. I woke up the next morning. I left it stiff. So and we did the same shit every week. Tuesday okay. was McSorley's. Uh, Shillelagh's was in Jersey City. 30 cents for an Alabama slammer and five cents for a mug of beer till 10 o'clock. Damn. At 10.01, five you cents? couldn't find a friend. Yeah. At 10.01, <laughs> the place was vacant. <laughs> it was fucking crazy. We're out of here. 10.01. At 9.45, people would get three mugs and three drinks. Like you see people drinking out of three straws and shit. Two, Wednesday was ladies' night at the Dome, and Thursdays was another ladies' night. So we detected them because they were 50 cents drink. So come here. Here's a 10. Go buy you and <laughs> yeah, six or, whores yeah. a drink and bring me one. You know, so, six whores. So for seven dollars, you were a hook. You were hell. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I'm a big shot today. Well, yeah. So I saw it down there, and I apologized. I'm sorry. In fact, I saw it on a Wednesday down there, and I said, I'm sorry about last night. I got fucked up. And she goes, I said, How about dinner tomorrow? And I took her to Picolissimo, Fort Lee, New Jersey, like a doctor. <laughs> there was adults that hadn't been to Picolisi. <laughs> I forget what the guy's name was. The guy has a, a weird name. He's missing his stomach, though. What? He owns the restaurant. It's always fun. That's not a good sign. <laughs> Hold on. I'll that's, a hell of a, that's a hell of a curse to own a restaurant and be missing your stomach. The stomach had a dish called Lobster Fra Diablo. No, what? He burned his okay. stomach out. <laughs> no wonder he doesn't have a <laughs> Okay. His, <coughs> oh, Fra Diablo. His best. His name of this thing was Lobster Fra Diablo. Yeah. His name was Johnny Monaco. And he owned, he owned Piccolissimo. He had no stomach. So he'd always be fucking like, look at your food. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, Johnny, eat a clam. I can't. I can't. <laughs> you know, I got no stomach. <laughs> I, never met somebody when now, I, was fucking I was a kid, and I'm going up there fucking giving orders because we'd get like a score, and I'd go up there and drop money, give them a drink, give them all a drink, you know. Dad, don't worry about nothing. And people would get pissed. It was like that scene when Belushi went to the restaurant and Blues Brothers. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Like yeah. it was white people in Fort yeah. Lee, and I would go up there with 16 gorillas. So I took her on a date up there, and they brought you a, a dish. I'm not even exaggerating. It was this big that looked like a fish. In the middle was pasta. It was surrounded by clams, mussels, and shrimp to the deck. God and damn. And on the top, two big lobster tails that were cracked <sighs> open with red sauce on top. Oh. No, 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 no. They're binga. You'd put your little thing on. She was in heaven. She's eating this fucking thing. Then we'd get out of there. I'd take it down by the Binghamton. The Binghamton was a boat that you'd go on and have a few drinks. There was a movie theater there. That's why I saw 48 Hours and Ghostbusters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But outside of there, your you, memory is something. If, if else. you snorted coke out there after like twenty minutes, you'd hear chick, 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 chick. the rats from the Hudson River would try to chip away at your car. It was fucking crazy. At your car coming? It was out? crazy. And Freddy Basasudo had a hole in his car, so we had to put a fucking piece of two by four <laughs> over it when we went down there to make out with chicks and shit. <laughs> You know, we used to drink beers and throw them out of the hole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
and people be driving going, what the fuck? <clears throat> That's all that rust. My buddy had a Volkswagen with uh, floorboards rusted out, too. His foot fell through one time on the oh. highway. Oh, <laughs> he's, like, ah! he's yelling, we're trying to stop the car's foot through. <laughs> so I take this little Tritches. Her name was Lisa Tritches, and she had a sister named Sue. She looked just <laughs> like Pat Benatar. In the first video of uh, You Better Run with the red and white <laughs> yeah, shirt on. Yeah, I even yeah. made it get a red and white shirt. I'm going to go get a red and white shirt on. Yeah. You're looking like Pat. So we started swapping spit, and I started eating her pussy. And she started, and I remember she used to put talcum powder in her pussy, because when I opened it up, a bunch of it came out and hit me in the <laughs> face. You know what I'm saying? And that bitch is on Facebook. She ain't dying of ovarian cancer. She's kicking. She's yeah. in Jersey. Yeah. But she had a, a shot of talcum powder hit me in the face. And I ate her pussy. She was banging on the top of the car. I was. I had her out there fucking both legs eating. I put a coke rock on her pussy. No dick. I cut her off from the dick. No dick tonight. I'm dropping you off at home. And don't even look at me sideways. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went over that fucking Friday night. I dropped her off like a gentleman. And we made plans, plans Saturday night to eat a pussy. Saturday what? night I was going to fuck her. And we went out, we went to a party. Uh, I got into a fight in the party. My hand got stuck in a barbed wire fence uh, right here as I was getting. He was taking me down. I stuck my hand in the fence and went in there. My like, God damn it. Cops came. Me and my boy and her and a, a piece of ass she had, Tasia Romano. Tasia Romano was a hot piece of ass. But Tasia once Romano. In a while, That's a good name. Oh, right listen there. to this. This was one of those bitches that for six months she looked good. And for six months she showed up looking like Lee. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to call her Tasia Romano Big Fat Piano. Because she would go, then for fucking six months she would not eat a thing and she'd puke and vomit. This bitch was fine to the bone. And Stinky, my friend Stinky, used to give her the Maluk stick for her. So now we're double dating. During what six months? He gave it to her like over four years every once in a while. In the winter. So, Tasia took Glenn to the other room. I got Trish's in the other room. Now she's playing Catholic girl. She's starting to cry. I don't uh. know. It hurts. Right. Don't put it too close to my pussy. I got a half gram in my pocket. I don't need this aggravation. You know what I'm saying? So at six in the morning, I go, listen. Get your life together. We'll go throw some holy water on. It's like it never happened. I was a gentleman. And I said, listen, I got, a half, holy water. I got a half a G in my pocket. This will get me home. And I walked home. <coughs> and guys, it says I walked into the door where I was living. The phone rang, and it was her. And she goes, I thought about it. Let's do it. I'm like, all right. And she picked me up. It was 7 in the morning. went back to her house. I gave her a stab, and there was blood. There was tears. There was a lot of rub in the back. And then she got to rub that back. I was going to say, who's back? I got to rub her back. She was on me. I'm, gonna go, I'm not a virgin. I'm going to go to hell. Don't worry about it. Oh, There's the plenty guilt. of dick in hell Catholic to party. guilt. Let's start this fucking thing. So, yeah. God damn. And guess what? Like a week later, I saw her. She was very cold to me. Then we had a couple of like weird discussions. I was totally in love with her. Like I was in love with her for reals. I would have gotten married at that age. Like, that's how in love with her I was. But after those two weeks, I was like, you know what, son, man, right here. This is something beyond my control. And I was a criminal. I was a criminal. I had no future. And I didn't have, I couldn't see there was no future. Oh my God, there was just no fucking future. So I kind of walked away from it a little bit. I went to Colorado. I heard she was dating some other guy, eating pills and partying and shit. Good friend of mine. I never held, held it accountable. Never even mentioned it to him. That was me and her were long done. And, and then I went back to New York one day and I went to a Coke dealer's house. And there she was looking beautiful. She said, hello. We talked a little bit. And she said, let's stay in touch. And between you and you and I, in my mind, the, the coop had flown already. It wasn't that I wanted to fuck her. I really liked her. I grew yeah. up with her. I've been around her for the last, you know, since 1978, I'd been around this girl. But something wasn't right, you know. And six months later, I called her because she was a travel agent. And I asked if she'd get me and my buddy Stinky plane tickets to Hawaii. <laughs> and she goes, call me tomorrow. I'll give you a quote. And when I called her the next day, she goes, I got to be honest with you. I'd rather you never call me. Really? Yeah, just like that. And I said, okay, que sera, sera. At the age of 21, I got one of my biggest lessons of love. Fuck them, send them roses, and move the fuck on, bitch. <laughs> what the fuck are you giggling about? Nobody... <laughs> Why did you like him? What did he, he 
did an arrow. I knew a second ago, but no. <laughs> keep, just keep going from where you told it, because then. Okay. <laughs> you know that little forehead you got. <laughs>